Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to work on one of those that I showed you as an upcoming project. It's the Sedona 2500 FB. It's a uh, freshwater based reel, although it could be used for inshore here on the Atlantic coast. I like these reels. I like them a lot. This is an older version of one. It's made in Malaysia. It's the 2500 series which fits nicely between the uh, the 2 and the 3000s. Uh, it's uh, got a lot of capacity, it's got very smooth drive, and as you recall, one of the problems that I had with this one was I didn't have a handle. And uh, one of my friends uh, commented, told me that they, uh, even though the handle from the original is no longer available, that you can use the one off the current line of the Shimano um, Katana. One of the ones that I had done earlier in terms of a product review. So I went ahead and uh, ordered one. I got one. It's running nicely, but I figured we'll take it apart and we'll show you. This will probably become a personal reel for me because it's uh, cosmetically it's lost its side plates. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but that generally is an indication of uh, overuse. And if that's the case, then we're going to uh, go inside and we're going to make sure that this uh, reel is ready to go so that it doesn't fail me as I'm out there. Uh, doing some fishing with this. So I, I like to start by taking the reel apart so that we see what's going on in the reel and uh, we'll move that along from there. So this reel has got four ball bearings in it. It's uh, got a capacity of about uh, 140 yards of eight pound test so it's got plenty of capacity in there and uh, we're just going to go ahead and make sure that it's ready to go and uh, take care of it uh, along the way. So I just took off the click rotor and the uh, washers that hold that onto the shaft. That click rotor works against this, uh, this little tag here or, or stud. And uh, when this is in, uh, when the, the drag is being engaged and it's backpedaling, that click rotor lets you know that uh, that you're losing line to a uh, fish you're fighting. So uh, I do notice there's a little bit of dirt in here, so I'm going to go ahead and take a cotton swab and clean that dirt in from the inside of the spool while I'm at it. And you can tell that uh, it's been used, as uh, like the loss of side plates is only one indication, but if you come underneath here, uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of dirt and debris in here as well. And that's not unusual for a top drag reel. The top drag reel is always going to take the brunt of the, uh, the water being splashed on it as you reel the line in or cast out. And uh, we'll go back and service these drags uh, towards the end of the video, but I did want to get that off. And uh, we'll go ahead now and we'll work down. I do notice that this case stops here, so I can not take the case off without taking the rotor off first. If this was a case that went through, you would have to remove the rotor first. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and take the case off and then we'll, uh, we'll go and remove the rotor next. So this is a through handle. You can tell that because when you turn the handle, uh, the screw on the other side moves, and uh, I know that because I was missing the handle when I got this reel in, so uh, I know I'm a little bit ahead of the schedule. Okay, three screws in the side plate. We're going to go ahead and take the, the three screws out. Now these screws are set up for Phillips head or flat blade. I generally like to get them started with the flat blade, but then this Phillips head gives me more control in taking these out, so I switch over once I've uh, made sure that they're turning. And I lay them on my table here to make sure that uh, the screws are all the same length. I know those of you that watch my videos frequently are probably getting tired of he hearing me say that. As probably as tired as you hear me say, use a protective glove and use a parts tray, but I'll go ahead and say those anyway. And then we might as well finish all of my uh, standard uh, announcements with use a parts bin. Uh, for your small pieces and parts because you won't you won't have to go searching for them when you go to reinstall. So these three screws are identical, which is what I wanted to check for. They are, so they can go into my parts tray. And as I've mentioned in the past, the parts tray is nothing special. In this case, I believe it's the bottom of a vinegar bottle. Uh, but uh, I've been known to use milk jugs and other pieces. Uh, just anything that can hold the pieces in a single place so that you uh, you know where to find them when you go to reinstall. Okay, I like what I'm seeing here. I got a ball bearing that's turning easily on the main gear. And this looks like a traditional setup uh, in terms of a reel. So I expect to see the, the ball bearings uh, on both sides of the main drag and up top when we go to take that rotor off. And right now I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, reel shaft, the spool shaft. 
and then we'll uh, take the rotor off and the other pieces out so that we can properly lubricate them and clean any debris that may be in there. To get that spool shaft off, you have to remove the retaining screw on the bottom. That goes into the crosswind block. Uh, those of you that service reels or, or are interested in servicing reels, this is a pretty standard setup here. Uh, almost every reel you open, you'll see something similar to this. You may see a bushing here rather than a burring, but for the most part, you'll see a crosswind block, a main gear, and uh, the crosswind gear underneath. So once I pull that out, pull the main shaft out, I can go ahead and take the main gear out. And just as I would suspect, I've seen uh, dried grease underneath on the main gear. There's no uh, grease in the teeth, which means it's time for it to be serviced. And uh, looking at this thing, uh, I want to make sure all the teeth are uniform, that there's no dents or broken teeth, uh, which uh, there isn't in this case. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a cotton swab and get, uh, get that old grease off of there before I put some new grease on. And uh, as I said, this is pretty much a standard setup within the, uh, the way fishing reels are made. And we had to take that shaft out because the shaft rides between the, the crosswind gear and the main gear. And uh, if you don't pull that shaft out, you can't pull the main, main gear out. Okay, that's us. We're going to set that aside. I'm going to pull the, the crosswind block out. It rides on a little stud on the crosswind gear. Just going to check it, and again, it's dry, so that needs some new lubrication there. And uh, I'm just going to pull the crosswind gear out. There's a little stud there. If you just grab it with the needle nose pliers, you can check underneath. And the reason I did that, I noticed that there's some junk in the bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that while I have the reel open, just to make sure that that didn't trap anything like sand or dirt or something that uh, could get into the gears and affect the operations from that. Okay, the, the non-drive uh, side has a plastic bushing in there, not a, not a bearing. So uh, I'm interested to find out where those other... Uh, three bearings are. We saw the one, I assume two is up here, three is probably on the rotor, uh, I'm sorry, on the bale, and the fourth is probably in the spool. So that's always interesting to check, but I know that this reel's uh, a smooth operator, and uh, I, I personally like the reel, and as I said, because of the cosmetics behind it, uh, it's not something that I would put out on a table if I was to sell, so uh, I'm probably just going to take this one and use it personally. All right, so um, I've looped up the back of the crosswind gear. I'm going to put a little uh, lubrication into the channel here. It's important to note when you take these off which what the orientation is. I noticed that the orientation on this one was north and south that way. If you don't notice it, it's very easy to flip it around, put it in that way. So uh, pay attention as you take these off. One of the things I've I continually say, because it's worked for me, is if you uh, if you don't know how to work on these reels, then I encourage folks to go ahead and um, take pictures along the way. That'll give you how you took it out, the sequence you took it out, and uh, if you get stuck on reinstall, it'll, uh, it'll help you with that. Okay, I'm just going to put this back in here, but I'm going to pull that, that rotor off now before I put the, uh, the spool back in, just to uh, oil the bearing that's under there. And that's done by taking the set screw out. Again, I'm going to put that on my workbench right now because that's a, uh, a short throw, and I'm hoping this is a 12 millimeter. It is. And it's a traditional threaded 12 meter in that it, um, millimeter in that you work counterclockwise to take the nut off and clockwise to tighten it. Some of the times these will be uh, working reverse, so you just need to know that. Uh, bearing under here, anti-reverse bearing, so that's an answer to where the fourth bearing is. It's an anti-reverse or continual uh, anti-reverse gear. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of oil underneath here. Uh, if that anti-reverse was not working, if it was dirty or, or otherwise, I would take it apart. In this case, uh, it seems to be working just fine, so we're going to just uh, leave it at that. Check underneath to make sure that any dirt and grime and grease is, is taken care of. In this case, it looks like there's a little bit of dirt under there, so I'm going to use a paper towel. So you've seen me use a cotton swab and a paper towel here. 
And then we have a bail click here. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on that just to make sure, or rather oil, just to make sure that that's functioning properly. I'm just going to go back and reinstall that. So I like these reels a lot. They were there from a price point. The Sedonas were pretty much a moderately priced reel. I want to say that this was probably sixty or seventy dollars new. So that's somewhere between uh, your upper level entry reels. Um, very competitive for what it's delivering. Nice quality on it, and uh, certainly more affordable than the hundred to two hundred dollar. Uh, counterparts for some of these. Okay, when I've tightened that up now, we can go ahead and put the set screw back in. Those of you that watch my videos are probably getting ready to go get a cup of coffee as I struggle with these little pieces. But uh, looks like this one shouldn't be too much of a problem here. There we go. So we got that pretty quickly in the game. I'm going to go back now and take that uh, shaft I'm just going to clean it up a little bit with some steel wool, make sure that if there is any contaminants on there that they're gone. I'm going to go ahead and put that back in through the pinion gear. Line up the hole into the cross wind block. And I use some pins and things for uh, the lining. Go to my parts basket, which is a pretty easy way to do that. Keep them all in one place, you know where they are. Grab the uh, lock screw for the shaft. And just tighten that up with the cross wind block. Since we didn't have a bearing on the other side, all I did was put some blue grease on the shaft. This one's got a bearing, so I'm going to use Reel X, which is a, a oil designed for fishing reels, before I put the, uh, the side plate back on. So the side plate is on. It's going to snap in. We're going to go grab those three screws because we know those three screws are identical. It doesn't matter which pieces and parts go where. So we'll grab the three of those next to put that on. And then we'll tighten that down. And again, there's people out there that ask me about should I use a mechanical screwdriver or the battery powered ones. I generally frown from that uh, because I know that uh, in the past I've seen examples with warped cases and cracked cases because they've over, over tightened with the torque. If you need to use one, go ahead and use one, but uh, save the last uh, turn or two for doing it by hand, uh, just so that you don't over tighten the side plate and cause the reel to bind. Uh, again, I wouldn't mention if I haven't seen it a lot, so uh, just uh, what's something to pick up from experience. All right, we got that. Before I go too much further, I'm going to spin it just to make sure it's doing well with that. I can go ahead and reinstall the handle at this point. So this is a lesson learned on the handles. Uh, I don't know why, but it seems like whenever you're seeing parts reels come up on eBay or wherever, it seems like they're always missing the handles. It's sort of like when you buy a used car, for some reason it's missing the trunk jack. See, I like that reel a lot. It turns, turns well. Uh, you may find that the, uh, the handle is no longer available. If you go to a parts site to try and find it, it'll tell you, you know, discontinued by the manufacturer. Don't give up on the reel because of that. Uh, what you may find is, like I did here, that a current handle actually fits that. And uh, you may find that there's others out there, even though it may not be the same model, like the Katana is not the same model as the Sedona, that uh, it will fit. Uh, so uh, check out the options that you have. Uh, if you find parts reels out there, don't be afraid to try and interchange the handles in that if you're missing one. And uh, you may just get lucky and uh, save a reel. So this is, as I mentioned, it's probably a $70 reel new that came real cheap because it didn't have a handle and somebody gave up on it. Of course, it didn't have the side plates as well. So, all right, last thing, we'll come up top here. We noticed that there was a lot of dirt in this one. So if I'm going to use this, I want to make sure that I have an effective drag. Well, even if I was going to sell it, I want to make sure I have an effective drag. And in order to do that, we're just going to take this drag stack apart. And we're going to uh, make sure that this is serviced properly. So to do that, there's a retainer clip that comes into the drag stack. You want to make sure that you pull that out. That rides in a groove here. The groove is all filled with some junk at the moment. 
and I, if I remember correctly this one has the felt washers in it and uh, it does you can see all the dirt and junk in there so we're going to go back to that cotton swab and we're just going to make sure that we clean all of that out it looks like we did a good job there I'm just going to grab a paper towel just to make sure I get that off now also another question I get is as these things come up with felt washers is uh, there, there seems to be some folks out there that don't think that the felt washer is effective or they've seen uh, the felt washers disintegrate because of heavy usage uh, and they want to know if these are interchangeable and they are you can uh, change these up for Carbonex washers and uh, they'll, they're more like a Pen uh, HT 100 kind of a fabric washer they're certainly more durable and if you want to go ahead and do it it's not that, mu that much more it's generally around ten dollars for a set of three in this case you only need one uh, so uh, if you want to go ahead and do that if you find out that you're losing drag or if these things are getting chewed up go ahead and make the conversion over all right so we cleaned it up it's only a single drag washer which would make sense for about a 2500 size reel we're going to go ahead and put that spring back in and i know i've said this uh, a lot of times over my videos it is a spring so make sure that you hold that spring as you reinstall so that it doesn't shoot out and uh, cause you some uh, anguish trying to find it on thing among your, your workbench or what have you. So, and I say that because I've shot them out from time to time and I've learned. Okay, so that uh, drag has been serviced now. Goes back on, you take the button for the drag knob, put that back on, and I think I'm ready to go fishing. So uh, let's go see if we can't catch a trout or a bass or something if we put some line on it. And uh, again, I like this reel a lot. It's a real smooth operator. I think uh, for the price paid, it's certainly a value with a little bit of knowledge on how to clean them up and service them. Uh, this one's ready to go and I'm sure it's gonna last a long time. So uh, that's why I do this, to share my experiences with you so that I can encourage you to keep your reels uh, properly serviced so that they can serve you as you go out and about doing your fishing. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And uh, with that, I'm going to thank you for viewing the video. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.